welcome back to another edition of Coffee with Ingham. I'm here with uh, Mr. Mark himself. Have you got the funky socks on today? Mark? I have indeed. I have, me, me too, especially <laughs> for the occasion. Today we are going to be chatting Capco, as you can see. Um, Capital and Counties is the correct name. Um, and Mark, obviously Capco has fallen in price from 100 bucks to 50 rand since January. Mm. Um, the largest fall occurred since, since Brexit. Can you put us into perspective a bit? I mean, it's, it's quite a big drop. This is a, an interesting company, Capital and Counties. Uh, it was originally founded by Donnie Gordon, who started Liberty Life. Okay. And it's, uh, it's their property assets in uh, Britain, and in particular London, prime central London. Uh, Covent Garden is their flagship uh, um, investment. And uh, there's been creeping concerns over the last number of months, and uh, after Brexit, that uh, just sort of accelerated. So the, 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 the stock has gone from trading at a 25% premium to their net asset value, net of debt, to a more than 25% discount. So there's been a significant concern around property values in London, and therein lies opportunity. For sure. For sure. And I mean, obviously, it's not a bad stock or share to have. Um, what would be the strengths um, of Capco as a business? Okay. The fact that they've got a really solid uh, balance sheet, they've got a very good loan to value ratio, I've got no concerns, uh, concerns with respect to the financial position of the uh, company, even if you had to write the value of the business down to 2014 levels, it would still be substantially higher than the stock is actually trading at, uh, at the, uh, at the uh, current time. Um, I think also the fact that they've got a, a prime land bank as well for future development, plus the fact that they've got strong uh, sort of occupancies. So, for instance, if you look at the lease profile, approximately half only comes up for a renewal beyond 2020. Okay. And a nice mix of rental income too, and that's not going to go away in a hurry. So there's a contagion effect here, and it wasn't helped by some unit trusts, property unit trusts that are listed on the London market, um, effectively shutting down to any new withdrawals because there's a cash liquidity situation. Okay. So I think everything related to property is rolling into that and therefore affecting REITs because this is what's referred to as a real estate um, in, in investment trust. Okay, cool. So, I mean, is it, am I right in saying, um, obviously with the pound getting a hammering a bit with Brexit, when, when the RAND's not doing too well, Capco pretty much is doing well if the pound's doing well? Well, in our note on the 7th of June, where we looked at scenarios around Brexit and what could happen, Capco was one of those companies featured. And I looked at a scenario there where not only the share price fell, but also the currency fell. And therefore, you got what I referred to as a double whammy. Okay. <laughs> and, and that's exactly what uh, happened. So you saw that stock go from over 70 ron to about 77 ron. To down to today at about 50 rot. Yes. And that speaks to the double whammy. You've got a share price effect and you've got a weakening pound effect as well. However, all things have a reasonable price. For sure. So at the moment, there is a, you know, panic in the uh, markets and that's probably taken the share down below what it otherwise would be. So given those balance sheet and location factors that I referred to, we're starting to see a stabilization coming through now. Okay. And, and I think so long as you understand the risks and the potential rewards, current uh, pricing is a pretty good opportunity for new okay. money to come. But I mean, for those that aren't a shareholder, um, and sorry to, to give you two questions at once, is it a buying opportunity now then? I, I, we, we reached that level, I think. And, and, and for those that were holding the stock, uh, Sorry to say, it's fuss bait. <laughs> okay. Um, but uh, for those who, who, who perhaps did uh, read our advice pre-Brexit and, and looked at the modelling around what could potentially happen yeah. uh, and kept their powder dry, um, then that fall now is a good opportunity for new money to come in. There could still be some sidewinders that come along. That's not out of the question. I think it's more likely to be 
um, uh, sectoral related rather than company specific. And I think an important point to mention for the viewers is that some uh, some savvy money, some institutional money yeah. has been coming in. Okay. Forward Asset Management, for instance, uh, at the end of June, um, at, at, at slightly higher prices than where we are at the moment, was buying stock in the open market and taking their holding up from 5% to 7% of the total shares in uh, issue. Norges Bank, too, also increased its shareholding. So clearly those are big institutional investors who see this, this panic and the fallout uh, from a sectoral point of view, a specific opportunity for this company. Great. Well, there you have it. Capco, is it the right time to buy now? Yes, potentially. Um, a big thanks to Mark for joining us again, and, um, and we'll see you guys soon with some other insights from Mark Ingham.